Beat Studio Buds are in the building. And on the box it says, made for Apple TV, iPhone and iPad. So yeah, here is an iPhone and this is what they mean. To pair with an iPhone, all you have to do is open the case and the iPhone will detect them and ask if you want to pay. And that's it, done, super fuss free. You get a choice of three different size silicone tips. Small and large are in this little box and medium are on the buds themselves. The passive noise isolation is pretty good. They have a good seal around the ear, these rubber tips. And if you are in a noisy area, these buds also have active noise cancelling, which is okay for the continuous noises like air conditioning or computer fans. It's nowhere near the level of the Sony XM4s. There's also transparency mode for when you want to listen to your content, but at the same time remain aware of what's going on in your environment. And it works well. It sounds pretty natural, especially at volumes below 50%. And it sounds like there are speakers on every corner in your room playing whatever it is that you're playing on your device. Let's talk controls. Really, there isn't much. So the B of the buds is a physical button with a mild click. It takes a bit of getting used to the first time, but I quickly got the hang of it. So short presses will play or pause whatever media is available, and a long press can either summon Siri or switch between the different noise control modes. For the price, I'm not too happy that they do not have wear detection built in, which auto pauses or plays when they are worn or removed. What about sound? They sound fine, pretty much a flat soundstage really, if anything, more biased towards the mids to highs rather than the lows, the low end is a bit weak. I mean, there is nothing wow about the sound, but that doesn't mean they are trash. The best way to describe the audio experience is probably meh, uh, usable for just casual listening, so a fitting task for them may be listening to podcasts or audiobooks or music, but whilst you are performing other tasks like the gym or jogging or chewing through some spreadsheets. The stereo separation is good. You can really clearly hear the direction from which the audio is coming from and it's good for content like movies. The battery situation is also decent. With noise cancelling on, you get a total of 15 hours of battery life, which is 5 hours for the buds and 10 hours for the case. With the noise cancelling off, you get a total life of 24 hours, with the buds contributing 8 and the case 16. Charging is via USB-C only. There's no wireless charging for the case. Oh, and if you're in the Apple ecosystem, it means just pairing them to one of the devices means it's automatically paired to all the Apple devices that you have that are under the same Apple ID. How much? 3,199 Rand or roughly 200 US dollars. And that's a lot of money for buds. I mean, it's a hundred bucks cheaper than the AirPods Pros, but that's still a lot of money. And for the sound quality I'm getting, it feels like these buds are playing on the nostalgia of the Beats brand and also that Apple reserves the better tech for Apple's line of audio accessories rather than Beats. I mean, my Huawei FreeBuds 3 are now going for around a hundred US dollars and they definitely sound a lot better than the Beats Studio Buds. A better buying choice might be getting the AirPods 4th Gen or the AirPods Pro if you prefer the silicone tips. These feel like they're a bit overpriced for what you actually get.